Mr. J's daughter gets a bombshell release as we have a look at the DC Collectibles DC Bombshells The Joker's Daughter statue. As a nightclub running sorceress equipped with a cane and a mask, the Joker's daughter statue is no laughing matter. She's draped in the iconic purple and green and is ready to leave you in stitches after her performance of the Mask of the Joker. Designed by Jim Fletcher and sculpted by Tim Miller, this statue is limited to 5,000 pieces and measures approximately 10 inches in height. Inspired by vintage pinup art, the DC Bombshell statue line features DC superheroes during World War II and launched the DC Comics series of the same name. DC Bombshell's Joker's Daughter, that's a mouthful, uh, stands, we're going to go ahead and take the tape measure, put it right to the top of the statue's head, there we go, stands at exactly 11 inches in height. If you follow your collectibles, however, in centimeters, then the statue stands at 27.9, just short of 28 centimeters in height. Some assembly is required when you get her out of the package she comes complete, well, minus her mask and minus her cane. You're gonna put her into the display base and then in the front of that, you're gonna attach the Joker's Daughter placard, which is very nicely done here in a riveted metallic look. So nice work here, nice artwork as featured on the side, consistent with what we've seen with the other bombshell statues. And much like other of the bombshell statues, there's a circular magnet on the back and a circular magnet down below Put the two together and you've got yourself a placard that's not going to go anywhere. Speaking of not going anywhere, however, like I said, some assembly is required. The one thing that I find falls out frequently is her cane. A nice bamboo looking cane with almost a crescent moon shaped handle to it. It's exquisitely painted, kind of looks as if it was made out of bamboo. The problem with it though is there's no place on the graded flooring here where it actually attaches, like there's no open circle. They've used the same display base that we've seen with other releases, and there's nothing that really attaches this. So instead, what you have to do is you take the crescent shape, and it fits in between her finger and her thumb. After that, it's just at the mercy of, well, that it doesn't fall out of her hand. I find actually, if you get the angle just right, um, she does hold it relatively well. Like if she has it straight down, you sort of get the benefit of the friction of the graded flooring to sort of keep it in place. It's just, a, again, a trial by error sort of thing before you eventually find the right angle to get the, uh, the cane to stay in her place. Then she also comes included with the Joker mask. Now you have to be extremely careful of this. Um, I can tell you, I'll just put the statue down for a second. There goes the cane. That the mask of Joker does look very nice. However, it is very top heavy. It's just because there's a thin bit of plastic or a thin bit of material that they used for the handle. And there's more weight up at the top than there obviously is at the bottom. So when you are putting it into her hand, you have to be very careful. To the credit though, it is a neat looking mask. 
They've added sort of a sheen to it, kind of mimics that of like a plastic, like an old plastic mask that you would be wearing over top of your face. I love the vintage look of Joker's face here. It's a nice dark lining there around his teeth and the areas inside his mouth. Some nice dark lining around the eyes as well. Sort of has a slightly off-white color too, slightly unsettling if you will. There's this little ridge that I guess in theory, when you put it into her hand, there that as serves as sort of the stopping point for where the mask isn't going to go any further. I kind of wish they could have done something similar when it comes to her cane, just so the cane wasn't going to fall off as frequently as it does. And again, it's just a matter of kind of lining it up to get it right before, uh, you know, you're probably not going to be moving the statue around anyways. The best logical thing to do is probably get a place where you're going to display the statue. And then after the fact, put the cane in place. Just that way you're not going to be picking up and moving it and that falling out as a result of it. The head sculpt, I very much get the vibe that it kind of looks like Lucille Ball. I would imagine that this is probably where they've taken some of their design cues from because it definitely does have a little bit of a Lucille Ball face sculpt happening here. To the credit of the statue, this is where really it showcases the best, is the coloring. Talking, of course, the red of the hair here. It's a very vibrant crimson red, which also makes its way into the eyebrows. The proportions of her head sculpt would dictate that this is a shorter character. Her face isn't so much elongated as it's much more shorter, almost more square-like. In fact, the proportions for her body would dictate that this is a much shorter character than, say, some of the other bombshells that we've had a look at. Most definitely, where the statue shines is the coloring. You get traditional Joker colors, the purples, the greens, and then you get a little bit of the orange happening there as well that would mimic Joker's vest. Here, we have get that orange trim that's happening around her bustier area. She's got some nice stitching here running around the areas of her glove. It looks like she may have made this herself, similar to what probably she's done here with her skirt. Little side accents certainly go a long way here. You've got these little smiling, almost like witch-like faces that are adorning the sides of her skirt. Again, you've got some nice alternating colors there of the orange, the green, stitching their way up these kind of tattered rags that she's made into her outfit. One touch I really like about the statue and something that I have to express is the most fragile component is these feathers that are coming out from the back. It looks as if actually if you look at the witch, these little witch faces, it looks like there's curly hair that comes out from those and then from there the feathers are jetting out from them. The feathers look like they are of similar lengths. They are very nicely sculpted here with a secondary coat of a darker brown just to bring out some of the details there in the sculpting of the feathers. I do really like that they are a nice contrast to the otherwise quite bright colors that we're getting here in the purples, the oranges, and the greens. As we make our way down her legs, we are seeing, uh, it looks like she's got herself a pair of stockings. One stocking unfortunately has ripped its way away from itself and you can see the exposed knee. Um, she does have the very small shoes, again leading me to believe that this character is very small in stature. The shoes have this nice purple trim around it, which is a nice complementing color to the light violets in her legs here. While she doesn't share the same color scheme as Daddy Dearest in her hair, she does get a little bit of green via this very large boa that wraps around her shoulders. It kind of looks like it would be a very plush shag carpet, very similar in, in material and sculpt. The coloring here gets two shades of green. I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up or not. A lighter shade of green kind of on the edges of that and a darker shade of green inside. Now talking a little bit about varying shades of color, I couldn't help but notice that looking on the packaging, it actually looks a lot lighter in her torso, in her face, and in her midriff. The packaging almost kind of makes it look like she's got a more contrast of lighter shades and darker shades of flesh tone, but actually seeing it now and physically holding it in hand, the colors are sort of all one color, one flesh tone. I kind of wish that they would have actually given some lighter shades here just to kind of break it up because she sort of almost just comes across as one color of flesh and lighting the being the way that it is. It kind of would have been nice if she had a little bit more contrast between the two. One other thing that's different from the way that the box showcases the statue or at least the artwork depicted on the side of the box 
is Joker's daughter, this boa that she's wearing over her shoulders, carries its way down. It doesn't just start and stop here. It carries its way and almost just snake-like drapes around the back of her body and drapes around the areas of her leg. I'm really not really sure why DC Collectibles didn't opt to do that. In fact, if anything, the boa could have also aided to support some of these feathers because the feathers are really just sticking out on their own. There's nothing really to brace them. If they had run the boa, say, behind it, there would have been something that the feathers could have rested against. Ultimately, DC Collectibles, when they decided to make the statue the way that they did, they just kept the boa to the top of her shoulders. I would have liked it, though, if the, the boa would have also carried its way down, like the artwork on the side of the box. I can't say that this is one of my favorite of the bombshell statues, but it does have some potential. She has a pretty face, a much more younger face, so I think the proportions of her are a little bit more off than some of the more older bombshells that we've looked at in previous instances. The color scheme is very much Joker-esque. It's sort of the colors you would expect to find on the Clown Prince of Crime. And thank you for the fact that they do include the Joker's mask. If not for that, I would probably have a struggle to try to guess who the character was, except for, of course, the fact it says Joker's daughter on the front placard. Speaking of the Joker's mask, that fits quite well into her hand. I wish the same could be said for the cane, which I find is a bit of a struggle to get nestled into her finger. It sort of rests in between her pointer and her thumb, and without a proper groove in place on the display base, you may find at times to have to readjust and replace the cane as it may fall out of her hand from time to time. Like I said, it's not one of my favorites of the Joker of the DC bombshells, but Joker's Daughter is definitely a neat looking piece. If you're a fan of Joker's Daughter, you may want to pick this one up and add this one to your collection. Uh, by the way, DC Bombshells, the Joker's Daughter statue, that's going to be a bit of a title, um, is available now in comic book stores should you wish to pick this one up for yourself. Today we were having a look at the DC Collectibles, DC Bombshells, the Joker's Daughter statue. If you want to go back and have a look at some of my other DC collectibles, DC bombshells, whether it be figures or statues, there's a playlist there for you to check out. And hey, now, while we're also at it, there's going to be some more DC collectible reviews coming up to this channel as we're leading our way into the holiday season. You want to get some good gift giving ideas, you may want to stay tuned to this channel for some other great videos. Make sure you also hit that little subscribe button down below. That will guarantee you that when new, new content is coming onto this channel, you'll never miss out. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. I always appreciate reading your comments. And if you're new to this channel, why not say hello down below? I always like to always try my best to reply to all the comments that are posted in these videos. So always post away when it comes to your comments. As always, guys, thanks for watching as you always do. And I'll see you next time.